Let's go ahead and finish this sci-fi shield hit type effect by creating the final pop simulations. So this project file, like I said, is available on Patreon. If you've been following the last couple of videos, you can grab it there and go through all of the individual settings if you're interested in that. Let's go ahead and leave off or start off where we left off, which was by creating these geometry, these growing sp uh, circles along our sphere here that we're going to use as emitter geometry for a secondary pop sim. So uh, the first thing that I want to do is actually to change up the geometry here just to make it a little bit more random. So I'm going to use a node called the Modify Normals node. And this node is actually a node that is part of my tool set, so that's available on Patreon as well. It is on there, and I'm going to use it to, to kind of displace our geometry here. You can do this any way that you want, but this is just going to be how I'm going to go about doing this. So I'm going to have this set to normals pointing away. And let's go ahead and actually just look at, well, no, we can leave it on there. So we're going to have normals pointing away. And by default, the this object is actually at the origin. So the normals pointing away is going to have it set at the origin by default. So we're going to, actually, we can take a look at those normals there. You can see that we have those normals on our points now. And if I take a point bob now, we can use this to displace along the normals that we have now generated. So we'll drop that down. We'll drop down an add node and we'll wire in our position into the add, our P into the displacement and add those together, add that to the position. And then I want to randomize for each point. So we're going to drop down a turbulent noise or whatever noise you want, but we'll do turbulent noise and wire that into the amount. It's going to give us some randomness in there. Let's change this to maybe like a sparse convolution here and maybe we'll offset this just to some random number to start off with. I guess it's not going to matter because we're going to, we're going to use the frame anyway. So let's actually just promote that parameter and we can come up here and let's just do dollar FF and maybe divide that by 10 and let's just copy that and paste relative references there and in the Z as well. So now they are growing and they're kind of changing shape as they grow as well. And we're going to use that as our emitter geometry. But if I take a look at our actual geometry here, you see if I come to the geometry spreadsheet, we have a ton of different settings here or attributes here that we don't really want anymore. So I'm going to drop down a clean node. We'll wire that in. And I don't want to do anything except for just to remove all of the attributes so delete everything or disable everything except for remove attributes and then we're going to take the normals we're going to create some normals and we're going to use those to kind of give us some randomness to our velocity here so i'm going to drop down a modify normals node again wire that in and i'm going to set this to normals along curve which gives us this by default but I'm going to set this style to primitive centroid and I'm going to rotate these normals a little bit and give us kind of a, an interesting shape to go off of. So that should be good here. And you can actually kind of randomize this and, and actually what you really should do and which I didn't is to come into the, the transform and we should rotate not the Y it's probably about the Z. Yeah could rotate in the, the Z direction uh, just to give the each one an individual or each um, each spawning of this of this circle a different orientation just to break up the you give it a little bit more randomness in the shape but uh, I'm not gonna do that right now It'll take some time to probably set that up so let's drop down an attribute wrangle and we'll come in here and in this wrangle, I'm going to take the normals and I'm going to just invert them. So we'll do at n is equal to negative at n and or not. Yeah, not m. Is that, that's an m, not, not m, but negative at n. And then we want to take those normals and make them a velocity that we're going to use in 
a pop net here. So we'll do at v is equal to at n. And we're going to multiply that by a random number. So we'll do random, random based off of the point number, pt num, pt num, if I can type today. And then we want to just fit that to a different range. So we'll do fit 01 because the random function will generate a number from 0 to 1. And we'll set that from like 0.5 to 1.3. And that should give us a random velocity for each of our particles there. So we'll actually create those particles now with a pop net. Pop net. Wire that into the first input there. And we can disable our, our normals there. And we'll dive into here. Let's go ahead and get rid of those guides now. And if I press play, we should have some particles spawning. Turn our particle guides back on. See, we have particles spawning on our objects, but they're lasting way too long. And we've got maybe not enough particles. So let's tackle all that. First, in the birth here, we're going to change the constant birth rate. You don't want a constant. We're going to just disable that. We'll set the impulse count to maybe like 10,000. And then we want the life expectancy to be like, I don't know, 0.4 with a variance of maybe 0.1. And I can press play now. And we should see, yep, we've got particles spawning and they are gonna go ahead and die after a few seconds now you can see that we got a couple of issues here number one the particles are uh, in different spots they're kind of off the surface of where the the shield would be so we'll tackle that in a little bit but first i want to just adjust the the velocity of these particles a little bit once again so let's take a pop wrangle And we're going to take our velocity. So V at V is equal to, let's see, I'll do a, check my notes here real quick. Uh, we'll do fit a one again, and we'll do random at PT num. So we're going to randomize based off the point number. And we'll do 0.5 to 5 is the values that I found that worked. And we're going to also multiply that times the current velocity. So V or times at V. And we also want to just add some drag to these particles as well. So we'll do a pop drag. And we will set the air resistance to like 20 or so. And that should give us something interesting we'll take a look at what that gives us so we get some more randomness into our shapes there and you can see we get those particles spawning on our geometry so let's go ahead and tackle the fact that they're not on the surface of our spheres here you can do that really or our shield i should say you can do that really simply by taking the the shield here we're going to take a peak node and we don't want them to be exactly on our shield we want them to be just a tiny bit off so like 0 0.001 should be good and then we can drop down a ray node and we will ray the points onto the collision primitive and that is going to be set to minimum distance and then we can drop down a null and we'll call this just like out particles or like um impact particles particles and now if i press play let's see what we get here so we get the particles spawning and they're kind of moving out from the origin of where they're spawning and they're moving in a random velocity for a poor point now uh, the modified normals this gives us kind of that interesting shape where they're kind of spinning a little bit that's why I rotated the normals by uh, 60 degrees, but you don't have to. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. You can just create a a, a 
random velocity and you get a, a similar type of effect. So the one thing that we need to tackle still is the particles actually spawning on top of the impacts and create the impact particles that are flying off when the laser is actually hit. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. So we're gonna come back into that pop net. We're gonna come back to this pop stream and we're gonna drop down another pop replicate node. We'll wire that in. And in this pop replicate, we wanna do similar stuff that we did to the last one. So we wanna turn off the constant activation. We're gonna set the impulse count to maybe like 100 particles. We're gonna set the life expectancy to like maybe 0.25 with a random variance of 0.05. And we'll just select that kill original particle as well. It should be getting killed anyways. But there's also a couple of other settings we need to affect here. So uh, if you remember, the shape is rather important. It'll spawn it in a sphere by default. And the sphere is actually really, really large. So we'd want to drop the scale down. I'm cool with it still being uh, in, a, in a sphere for this, this specific case. But well, let's drop that uniform scale down to like 0.01, just so that they spawn in a little bit of a random location, but not too far away from the actual point. Because the, the laser uh, kind of has uh, some thickness to it, right? So it wouldn't all be spawning from the same point. Well, let's take the attributes here, and this is very important. There's one thing that you need to do is take the inherit attributes, and we want to just get rid of the stopped attribute. Because if you don't get rid of the stopped attribute, your particles will not move. And let's set a, we'll use the add inherited velocity setting and we'll create a little bit of a radial velo velocity. And let's just take a look at what that gives us here. So if I press play here, you can see that we're getting some particles that are spawning and they're exploding off. Now there is some, some things that I saw that I'm not seeing it happen here, but in my original, my original effect, there was an issue where the particles were spawning kind of in a, in a line. And if that happens, the real easy way to get that to uh, kind of get rid of that is to just enable some variance. So I'm gonna give it a variance of like two. And then we also want these particles to move up and we're also going to give them some gravity. So we'll just set that up now. So we'll do a 0.3 is a setting that I found in the Y that's going to make them uh, spawn and go up a little bit. I restart and see that the particles now have a little bit of an upward momentum to them which is kind of what we're looking for. And then we need to take a, actually we need to put them all into a group first. So pop group. So we'll take those particles, put them into a group called laser hits. And we will enable that this time. Didn't do that last time. And then we need to put down a gravity and we can put that after, or actually I didn't want to use a gravity because that uh, didn't give me the effect that I was kind of looking for. I'm gonna use a pop force. And actually if I drop down a gravity node, you can see that the force is set to negative 9.8. And we'll just take that value and we'll put that into the force. And we'll wire that into this afterwards. And we want to enable that group that we just created. So laser hits. And now if we press play, we should have some, uh, some particles that are spawning and they're falling kind of towards the ground, which is more what we're looking for. And I don't know, I don't remember exactly why the gravity didn't work. Let's take a look and let's see if it shows up what we're looking for. So you can already see that we're not getting our particles. That's because we didn't enable the group. So we'll do 
Yeah, see, I don't think it gave me the option for the laser hits. So we'll just do just laser. Did I make that a capital H? I did. Laser hits. And yeah, see, it's not really working properly. So uh, the pop force is kind of somewhat the same or gave me the same sort of effect. So that worked for this situation. And now we have a particle spawning. And if we take a look at the final things, so if we take our, take a null, we can wire that in there. We can merge these together along with our shield our original shield and it's going to give us an error but that's all right let's take a look at what we're getting maybe we'll drop down a color node we'll take these particles and we'll make them blue and take the impact particles and whoops we'll make these red or something and we'll see what we get here. So this is the kind of kind of the final effect. And actually, you can speed this up really simply by dropping down a pack. Now if I press play, you see we have our particles all spawning. And it doesn't look like we have our impact particles. At least they're not showing up. They are. They are there. It's just they can't really see them. Um, let's see. They show up black. Maybe we'll set the background here to a dark background. And you can kind of see. Let's also turn off the grid. Uh, the grid. There we go. And you can't really see it that well, but it's there you can see we have these red particles it's probably not coming through on your screen but you can see if i turn that on see we have these particles flying off there and we get our final effect which creates the same sort of thing that you saw in the demo i probably will go over a final uh just compositing thing because the final render that is raw is a lot different than what the final look actually was. So I'll cover that in another video, just a little bit of compositing and fusion, and it gives it just a little bit of the added effect. But this is ultimately the final effect. This is what I did to generate this type of effect. Uh, pretty simple setup, not anything that's too difficult, just a little bit of, of Vex in there and a couple of different pop simulations to, to create this effect and that gives you a pretty good look in in my opinion so anyways hopefully this helps you out i do have a bunch of other videos on my channel if you want to learn more about houdini you can go ahead and take a look at those anyways thank you guys for watching and have a good day